Hi, everyone. Uh, it is a uh, pleasure for me to uh, welcome all of you to the first um, installment of the, uh, of the uh, European and uh, International Environmental Law um, Lecture Series uh, for the new academic year, the 2021-2022 academic year. Uh, we are starting today with Sabrina Brizioli, a postdoctoral fellow at the University of uh, Perugia in uh, Italy, to uh, explore a uh, uh, fascinating topic, uh, which is the role of uh, codes of conduct and environmental product declarations in uh, greening agri-food systems in the EU and internationally. Of course, a topic that has multiple ramifications in terms of the agenda for international development, the sustainable development goals more broadly, and of course, the EU uh, framework uh, for the European Green Deal, the farm to fork strategy and so on. And uh, our guest today will uh, deal with all of these aspects and we look forward to it. With me, Riccardo Pavoni, the academic coordinator of the uh, European International uh, uh, Environmental Law Jamone module, which is hosted by the University of Siena. I will give the floor to Riccardo for uh, some introductory remarks before the presentation starts. No, no, very, very briefly and rapidly, because I would like just to uh, thank uh, Dr. Sabrina Brizioli for being with us today. It's a pleasure to host uh, a conversation and presentation relating to such a topical issue, the greening of agri-food systems uh, in the light of the evolving international and European framework in this area. And, there, uh, and specifically, uh, as Dario already said, the, the role of environmental codes of conduct and environmental product declarations in achieving the objective of sustainable agri-food systems. I don't want to um, touch upon any, any more uh, details about the presentation because we will have time at the end of our presentation to ask questions. So I just uh, uh, remind the, the audience that they are uh, fully able to uh, write their own questions and then uh, Dario Piselli will uh, will uh, ask those questions to uh, uh, Sabrina Brizioli. Uh, just a few words about uh, Sabrina's background. As Dario already said, she is currently a postdoctoral fellow at the Department of Law of the University of Perugia. Um, so and I'm, I'm particularly glad to have her here because the chair of international law at, the, at that department is particularly active in the area of international environmental law. Uh, just mentioned that Sabrina holds a PhD cum laude from the University of Perugia. Her thesis was about uh, a topic that we, that we know very well and that we care a lot about, uh, that is the access to genetic resources. Uh, she's currently located in Florence, so she's not in Perugia because now she has a fellowship at the historical archives of the uh, European Union, which are located, as everybody knows, uh, in Florence at the European University Institute. So thank you so much, Sabrina, for being with us. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Thank you, Dario. Thank you, Professor Pavoni. Uh, I'm also very pleased uh, uh, to, to be here and to have the chance to uh, discuss uh, about a relevant topic of my research activity in the research and sustainable agriculture. Uh, well, now I share my name. Uh, okay. Can you see my presentation, Dario? Yes, now everything seems to work fine. Okay. Well, before starting my presentation, I would like to, uh, to clarify two basic uh, concepts. Uh, the concept of agri-food system and the, the word greening. According to my research, 
research, uh, a food, uh, an agri-food system has the interplay of different um, elements such as environment, people, inputs, processes, infrastructures and institutions and the activities that relate to the production of food such as uh, processing, uh, distribution, uh, preparation and consumption of food and of course the, out the outputs of these activities including socio-economic and environmental outcomes. The word greening in my research means um, the uh, integration of environmental concerns into sectoral policies, of course, uh, basically in, at the EU level. Today, I will try to focus on this greening uh, process and also, um, uh, and also focus on the role of codes of contact and product declarations in the view of the future European strategy, strategies such as uh, um, the uh, Green Deal and uh, one of its building blocks, uh, the Farm uh, to Fork strategy. Here you can, um, it is possible to see the overview uh, of my speech today. I will, I will start by uh, describing and uh, giving a, a picture of the complex structure of the European agri-food uh, system to then try to uh, trace back the history of uh, the greening process. Basically, uh, it is the result of the um, evolution of the environmental integration principle. Of course, uh, these, uh, um, these principles and uh, an aspirational um, sustainable agri-food system uh, needs uh, to, to, to be uh, put into practice uh, uh, through green metrics. And I will also analyze how these green metrics are put into the European transition toward a sustainable food system, um, looking closely, uh, of course, to the uh, strategies that I have mentioned before. Then I will um, try to analyze new alliances for this uh, new responsible agri-food system, looking closely to the um, Commission's commitment for a corporate social responsibility. Uh, at the European level, and, uh, and I will focus, of course, on the structure and content of the uh, Code of Conduct as uh, recently launched by uh, the Commission, and uh, the opportunity um, that uh, environmental product declaration could uh, could give to uh, the um, to, to circular and green information to help uh, consumers um, take sustainable and uh, healthy choices. Then I will trace some conclusion and I'll be ready to uh, answer uh, for answer questions. Well, to start my presentation and uh, this very long discourse about uh, the greening of agri-food system, I need to start by uh, giving a picture of the European agri-food system. Uh, what does the European agri-food system look like? Uh, the agri-food system is mainly um, characterized by uh, external input, um, external inputs such as fossil fuel, fertilizers, pesticides, lower labor inputs and long supply chain. Uh, its structure uh, um, involves uh, um, small-scale family-based producers uh, um, who work who work alongside large-scale globalized um, food companies and their suppliers. A crucial role is also played by consumers. Consumers are critical actors in the food system and their uh, choices are generally driven by um, food environment. There is to say um, physical, social and economical surroundings uh, that influence what people eat. To, um, uh, with reference to European agriculture, while European agriculture uh, provides uh, other important functions such as contributing to rural development and managing landscapes, um, the provision of food remains uh, its primary func a function. Trend towards intensification, growth in larger specialized uh, production units and monoculture have uh, um, 
have led to uh, considerable environmental impacts. Um, they reduced uh, um, diversity and uh, uh, they grow concerns uh, about among uh, consumers about food quality. This type of input intense and uniform uh, production makes the food systems increasingly um, reliant on chemical fertilizers, pesticides and preventive use of antibiotics. And of course, uh, all these elements lead systematically to uh, negative impacts and uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, the most uh, important and crucial environmental impact um, of, agri the, of agriculture are uh, the um, overuse of nutrients. Nutrients uh, such as uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are essential for both crop uh, production and animal and human nutrition. However, their overuse can lead to nutrient losses that affect to soil um, and water quality and have a considerable negative impact uh, on biodiversity and ecosystem. Agricultural production um, is affected by climate change, of course, but uh, it also uh, contributes uh, to greenhouse gas emissions in many ways. Uh, let's think about emissions from land use change and soil carbon loss, and emissions from the energy use of ma machinery and uh, transport. Um, over 80% of the greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture are related to livestock sector. Agriculture is, all, agriculture is also uh, the most energy intense phase of the, food, of the food system, accounting for nearly one third of the total energy consume, consumed in the food production chain. Um, how to tackle this environmental impact of agriculture um, in the uh, European strategy? Uh, the greening of the agri-food system has of the environmental integration of EU sectoral policies. Um, this, the history of environmental uh, integration uh, starts uh, at the international level with the uh, Agenda 21 and the Rio Declaration, whose main uh, um, objectives were to promote patterns of consumption, sustainable co consumption and production, and uh, um, reduce environmental stresses. At the European level, the Maastricht Treaty strengthened the community's commitment to environmental protection and uh, um, by including as one of its basic tasks uh, the promotion of sustainable and non-inflationary growth respecting the environment. The uh, first uh, um, environmental agenda at the European Union um, is, the is the fifth uh, environmental action program. Uh, this agenda um, uh, under, uh, underpinned uh, two major principles. The integration of environmental dimension at all major policy areas uh, is a key factor. Indeed, environmental protection targets can only be achieved in it by involving those policy areas causing environmental deteriorations. And secondly, only the re it is important to uh, replace the command and control approach with shared responsibility between uh, uh, the various actors um, such as government, industry and the public and uh, um, this could uh, effectively realize the, uh, a sustainable uh, change in the agri-food system. The um, other two important instruments uh, for the uh, environmental green integration in the European strategies uh, were the uh, two internal communications uh, of the um, of the Commission in 1993 and 1997. These two communications uh, um, uh, took uh, into account uh, environmental evaluation and uh, uh, environmental impact. Um, in broad term, uh, in new uh, legislative 
proposals and uh, it will be necessary to describe and justify the impact on the environment as well the environmental costs and benefits involved uh, especially communication in 1997 and uh, underlined the importance of um, environmental integration and considered uh, it no longer an option rather uh, an obligation um, then uh, the um, uh, the green turn uh, the green turn is also embodied uh, in the um, european councils uh, the cardiff uh, european council colonia european council lcg european council uh, developed uh, um, uh, integration strategies and also um, put uh, in place indicators for relevant uh, sectors such as transport, energy, and of course, agriculture. The Lisbon Treaty and uh, the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights um, embodied uh, environmental green integration and this uh, uh, green vein of the agri-food uh, system. And uh, the rationale behind the principle of uh, environmental integration in EU sectoral policy lies in the realization that progress in environmental field by itself is not sufficient and may be countered by developments in other policy fields that disregard the environmental protection requirements. In broad terms, uh, uh, the environmental integration principle calls, so therefore, for a continuous uh, greening of uh, union policies. And more recently, the seventh environmental environment action program and put and put emphasis on the um, on the link between um, the protection of nature and the ecological release, the resilience, and, and the, the necessity to have a long-term uh, sustainability vision of uh, um, living well uh, within the limits of our planet. Uh, but this aspirational background uh, need, to put, need to be put into uh, practice this uh, through um, the, the green metrics. Green metrics in my uh, research are a useful tool uh, to shed light, light uh, on complex dynamics in food systems. Basically, these uh, green uh, metrics uh, allow and are the reason for green strategies. And they allow uh, decision makers to better navigate the complex relationship between environmental impacts of, um, of uh, sectors and, uh, um, and, uh, and climate change and other environmental aspects. Uh, the, most, um, uh, the most known uh, green metrics are uh, food security and nutrition, food production and climate change, uh, and uh, the relationship between agriculture and ecosystem services. Uh, despite this, uh, the way food is produced, uh, processed, distributed and consumed is influenced by global and local trends, such as urbanization, industrial digestion, culture, cultural and demographic changes and uh, um, literature has highlighted the need to um, give space to other components of the agri-food system that are generally uh, underrepresented. For example, it is uh, um, according to some literature, it is important to focus on uh, the inequitable power relations, relations between food system actors. So uh, this in order to avoid uh, environmental injustice and inequity along uh, the uh, food chain. Another um, proposed uh, green metric um, is the multi-actor evaluation, that is to say, taking into account rural and local uh, realities to foster um, participatory uh, agroecological transition and uh, um, green practices. Um, 
Other important green metrics are uh, sustainability indicators and the environmental impact assessment. The indicators uh, measure the relationship between agriculture and uh, environment, and uh, they uh, can be useful inputs uh, for illustrating the environmental dimension of sustainable agriculture. Some attention is also given to uh, the economic and social dimensions of sustainable agriculture agriculture in the context of farm financial resources and uh, rural viability. Of course, the use of these uh, green metrics uh, is not sim simple because uh, um, capturing the interface between the biophysical environment and human activity through uh, indicators is, uh, all, is sometimes uh, and generally um, complex, especially for uh, certain um, aspects such as um, socioeconomic phenomena or phenomena or agri-environmental outputs and effects that generally are not valued in markets and are not easily measured in physical terms. Let's imagine the use of um, landscape. Uh, any ideal um, agri-food system uh, would be characterized by uh, the, um, the relationships of uh, the relationship between these different elements, sustainability, green practices, uh, food production, stewardship, and ecosystem, eco, eco design. Uh, sustainability means that food is produced and processed and of course dist distributed in ways which use natural resources sustainably, promote high standards of welfare, protect food safety and make significant contribution uh, to rural community. Green practices are uh, our practice uh, means that food system uh, adopts green uh, practices taking into account factors across the supply chain and uh, just to give an example of these practices it is possible to to mention green farming or else called organic farming um, or um, uh, social soil con con conservation water conservation conservation of of forest species, prevent soil erosion, and so on and so forth. Another um, relevant uh, element in a, 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 a hypothetical agri-food system is uh, um, product stewardship. Product stewardship can be defined as the share, uh, shared responsibilities uh, that all the participants uh, in a food, in a product's life, life cycle have for minimizing the environmental um, and health impacts. Uh, companies' responsibility have been extended to uh, stakeholders from uh, shareholders. And uh, all supply chain entities are responsible for the post consumption stage or else called an um, end of life uh, of product. Um, the um, eco design um, is another crucial aspect of the agri food system. Eco design is a way of promoting the existing uh, products or brand new products designed by ensuring that they their whole life cycle has minimum impact uh, uh, to the environment. And uh, uh, basically, uh, products should respond to the, the so-called three R, uh, recycl recyclability, reuse, and recovery. Uh, in the context of um, eco design, is it, it is important and to underline the role of eco-labbing and uh, the life cycle assessment. With a special view to um, the life cycle assessment, it is important to say that it is uh, the process of examining the impacts of a product of a product over its entire lifetime. A life cycle assessment measures uh, uh, all um, ensure that uh, the, um, the, 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 the product uh, has a minimum in environmental impact. 
um, how he is this uh, uh, hypothetical uh, uh, agri-food system framed in the uh, European uh, strategy. In its commitment to implement the 2030 agenda, the EU has launched uh, the uh, European Green Deal, an ambitious uh, plan to make Europe the first climate uh, neutral continent by 2050. One of the Green Deal uh, building blocks is the Farm to Fork strategy presented by the Commission on 20 May 2020, together with the Biodiversity Strategy for 2030. Uh, the Farm to Fork strategy uh, puts uh, forward an action of 27 uh, legislative and non-legislative measures, including uh, elements triggered by um, the the weakness, weaknesses uh, in the EU chain revealed by the coronavirus crisis. Um, the main actions uh, in the um, uh, uh, farm to fork strategy are actions for the food uh, production sectors, actions for the food value chain, actions uh, for food consumption. I would like to focus my attention on the actions for the food uh, production sectors. And, uh, and uh, among them, uh, and, uh, uh, the um, strategies that uh, um, try to uh, enhance uh, the local and rural dimension and uh, the commitment to uh, corporate social responsibility. The, um, um, the aspect of uh, um, the importance on um, uh, rural, the rural dimension uh, is also evident in, um, in another important and uh, recent instrument, uh, which is the um, uh, Glasgow, Glasgow Declaration. The Glasgow Declaration is a commitment uh, by subnational governments to tackle climate change through integrated food policies. Uh, indeed, uh, this is uh, um, uh, a signal of a vertical uh, environmental integration. Uh, the uh, strategy uh, I have mentioned uh, before are uh, instead uh, an example of horizontal environmental integration um, in differ different sectoral uh, policies. The um, uh, Glasgow Declaration represents a vertical integration between different levels of uh, governance. The, the Declaration pledges uh, to accelerate the development of the integrated food policy, such as um, a key tool in the fight against climate change. And uh, it also commits local authorities to um, reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. The prominent role of local actors um, is due to the fact that uh, um, they are best placed to implement effective policies um, in many areas of food systems. Just to um, to uh, mention some of these uh, uh, strategies, let's imagine the uh, food waste reduction, but also uh, sustainable food procurement, regional food hubs and farmers markets, um, uh, framework to support short supply chain and develop uh, and, uh, the development of pesticide free and GMO free districts and also bio districts and uh, organic regions. Uh, to uh, come back to the um, European level and uh, the um, farm to fork strategy, the EU Code of Conduct for Responsible Food Business and Marketing, pra and marketing Practice is a um, central and important uh, chapter within the farm to fork strategy, which aims uh, to translate the green transition into concrete actions for the food system at every step of the chain. Uh, Quoting Franz Timmermans, uh, we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions and alt and shape a food system that makes it uh, easier to choose a healthy and sustainable diet. The Code of Conduct uh, as uh, mm, launched by the Commission uh, intended uh, first and foremost um, is intended uh, first and foremost for the middle players of the supply chain. 
food uh, value chain, sorry, uh, food manufacturers, food retailer, and food service. The code of conduct of responsible foods uh, business and practices offers two frameworks for enga of engagement for participating companies and associations. Association. One general and one more ambitious uh, commitments. The general framework includes a variety of objectives and targets that companies uh, can commit to. The second framework invites companies to demonstrate uh, leadership by proposing their own sustainability commitments. Um, the structure of this uh, card uh, of conduct uh, he is here in uh, this slide. I would like just to say that for this code of conduct to be successful, it should demonstrate a contribution to environmental health and uh, social sustainability of food system. And uh, actually, the, in, um, in the implementation of this code of conduct, commission, the, the Commission has adopted the so-called One Health uh, approach. Uh, in fact, this code is not only a contribution to the objectives of the EU Farm to Fork strategy, but also to other initiatives of the European Green Deal, including the biodiversity strategy and the EU uh, industrial strategy. Uh, it also um, it is also compli in compliance with uh, Europe's beating can cancer plan, as well as international sustainability objectives such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and those of the Paris um, Climate Agreement. Uh, the most relevant principles um, of this code of conduct are of course legal compliance not only to the farm to fork strategy and a uh, european green uh, green deal but also to um, eu and national competition rules and uh, another important principle is uh, uh, positive collaboration. Uh, indeed, uh, the um, code supports uh, a holistic approach by ensuring multi-stakeholder dialogue, bringing together different actors. And, uh, uh, also, inclusiveness uh, and, uh, and uh, as uh, agreement, agreement, agreementric is uh, important because uh, the, um, uh, the the code of conduct tries to um, to foster um, uh, the the so-called think small first principle. Uh, there is to say the inclusion of uh, small medium sized enterprises into a uh, um, a responsible uh, agri-food uh, agri system. Um, just briefly to focus on uh, the, um, the action, uh, this code seeks to improve sustainability on three levels in relation to food consumption patterns for healthy and sustainable diets within the inter internal processes, uh, um, operations and organization at the level of the actors in the middle part of the food chain and throughout the supply chain in liaison with uh, primary producers and other uh, actors. But uh, despite the um, communi Commission's uh, ongoing effort to promote corporate social responsibility policies, a more stringent, a more uh, stringent measures are needed to ensure uh, transparency and responsibility for higher ethical and ecological standards in the production and distribution of food. Indeed, today it is difficult for consumers, companies and other market actors to make sense of the, the, the many environmental labels and initiatives on the environmental performance of products and companies. There are more than um, 200 environmental labels active in the EU and there are more than uh, 80 um, uh, widely used reporting initiatives and methods for carbon emission only. Um, another issue is uh, greening. Companies are giving a false uh, impression of their environmental impact or benefit. Uh, greening washing misleads market uh, actors and, and um, 
and does not give uh, due adva advantage to those companies that are making the effort to green their products and activities. Uh, how to face uh, this, uh, uh, this challenge? Uh, at the European uh, level, uh, in line with treaty, uh, the, the functional treaty of the European Union, Article 12, and uh, in line with the uh, Charter of Fundamental Rights, the, um, uh, the, uh, Euro uh, the uh, European Consumer Agenda develops uh, a systematic approach uh, to integrate uh, consumer interests into all, level, all relevant policies and puts uh, a, spe a special emphasis on tech problems faced by today consumers in the food chain. At the institutional level, there are joint efforts by the DG Environment and the DG um, Justice. The DG Environment uh, envisages the proliferation of inconsistent methods and initi initiatives to um, uh, about uh, uh, information uh, on uh, products and there are too many uh, misleading environmental claims uh, on the DG um, the DG um, justice has uh, uh, envisaged that consumers face uh, untrustworthy information or practices preventing them from contributing to the green transition uh, of course the European Green Deal uh, um, asks uh, for companies to make green and, uh, claims and this claim should be uh, substantiate uh, by uh, standard methodology to assess the uh, company's uh, impact on the environment and even the circular economy action plan um, uh, proposed uh, to companies to substantiate uh, their environmental claims using product uh, and organization environmental foot footprint methods. Uh, the uh, consumer testing of alternatives uh, for communicating the environment footprint uh, profile or product final report has highlighted has uh, in response to an increase in consumer interest in accurate and understandable information about the environmental aspects of the product they uh, purchase a common method of, a common method for calculating the um, environmental impact of products product uh, um, uh, should be develop, developed uh, and uh, um, the European Commission joint uh, research center proposed uh, a, a methodology based on a life cycle assessment that is to say the product environmental footprint how to promote uh, these uh, um, uh, this, uh, uh, eco labels? There is to say a label uh, that uh, um, implements this uh, um, life uh, cycle assessment and, um, and, and give reliable information about the uh, product's environmental footprint. There are different green labels, uh, and I uh, just uh, would like to uh, focus on the um, uh, environmental product declaration, which are the third type of uh, declaration here in this slide. Uh, these claims are qualified uh, product information based, of course, on life cycle impacts. And they are presented in a form that facilitates a uh, comparison between products. But uh, this comparison is not uh, a, um, a way uh, to, um, to say which of the products is best. And uh, um, environmental product declaration, despite the development and use of um, environmental product declaration is a voluntary act, the, um, their, their demand in recent years has increased. Environmental product declaration as are based on product, product category rules, providing rules, requirements, and guidelines for product category. And this declaration does not mean that the product, uh, that one product is superior to alternatives, as I said before, but it does provide uh, declaration for consumers uh, uh, when, uh, who need confirmation on the product's environmental impact from start to finish. 
um, this is the main, these are the main features and the structure of an environmental product declaration. Environmental product declaration ass asserts uh, objectivity because environmental performances are calculated using uh, the, the scientific methodology of uh, life cycle assessment. Uh, they ensure uh, comparability among the uh, same group prepared on product uh, um, category rules and they ensure uh, credibility because they are verified by a third uh, party. It must be taken into account that uh, there are different criteria we use to structure an environmental product declaration and um, these criteria are um, linked to the different phases in the um, value chain of uh, food production. Um, phases are the extraction of resources, manufacturing, distribution, use and disposal of, uh, um, uh, of means of production. And uh, all, these phases, all these phases are related to environmental, environmental indicators. Uh, what are the pros and cons of environmental product declaration? Of course, uh, environmental product declaration uh, guarantee the description of environmental impact uh, and the performance of the product and also um, uh, uh, give uh, information search uh, for useful for consumers. On the other side, there there is the risk to a standardization of these uh, indicators, uh, consumer needs to be educated to, um, to understand this indicator. And the uh, and, uh, other two um, negative and downside of this environmental declaration are the uh, two technical knowledge uh, that is necessary to uh, structure the environmental product declaration and, the, and how to value uh, the accreditation by the third party. What about uh, the uh, European response uh, in, in this case, uh, in this situation? Of course, uh, um, European, uh, Europe needs uh, a wider labeling strategy because they, um, uh, the proposal for a Nutri score is not sufficient and it's not enough for consumers, which are now more um, interested in uh, knowing the environmental impact of products they are going to uh, to buy. Uh, it is also important to educate and communicate uh, um, to consumers and, and see together the, the marketing uh, and instruments. And, and eye tracking methods and studies and high tracking methods and studies have highlighted that um, uh, labels with uh, um, uh, environmental indicators has have the um, attitude to grasp uh, better the attention of the consumer. Um, and another important aspect for a European Union to face this problem of the multiple, the multiple uh, eco labels is uh, the need for uh, an interaction of mandatory and voluntary um, labeling. Uh, so to, um, to, to, I'm going to, to, to make some conclusions. Uh, firstly, I would say that the environmental integration in the sectoral uh, policy, especially uh, in agriculture, has uh, um, shown the, impo the importance of a comprehensive approach to the agri-food system. And uh, um, uh, this approach uh, should take into account environmental impacts the societal uh, expectation on food and earth nutrition. Um, the environmental integration in the uh, agri-food system also means that new strategic narrative of agri-food system should priori prioritize for better, better production, better nutrition, uh, better environment and better life. Uh, in, and better life. Uh, mm, 
of course there's a shift uh, in uh, the, the the idea of uh, corporate responsibility a collective and processed uh, responsibility uh, which characterize the, the entire value uh, chain of the product not only the end phase and the downstream activities this is this is due to the fact uh, to the continuing environmental impact of the food production and the greening of the value chain uh, the kind of instruments that uh, um, are used in the in this greening process of the agri-food system are no longer laws or mandatory schemes, rather voluntarily and technical tools. At the first stage, there was a great use of economic and business instruments, uh, basically dealing with the principle of eco-efficiency. The current aspect of code of conduct and um, Eco-design reveals an ethical approach with aspirational targets and realistic commitments linked to environmental principles. Uh, there are two broad tendencies that can be um, identified in the evolution of the product-oriented policy within the EU. The incremental uh, approach and the comprehensive approach. The incremental approach um, aims to um, set our policy framework and uh, then to develop incrementally a portfolio of more product-oriented environmental policies. Uh, in the comprehensive approach, products are seen as the lens through which all environmental policies should be focused. Um, there's also a tendency toward uh, a green consumerism. Uh, that is to say that consumers are more concerned about environmental impacts and more demanding about environmental sound uh, products. They are more proactive and more conscious in the decision they take and prepare to pay more for environmental sound choices. But their expectation, of course, are high. Uh, today, almost half of the consumers are concerned, that is to say they care strongly about the environment when buying products and conscious, that is to say they are responsible when buying products. At the institutional level, I uh, can say that there's a green upgrade of the EU Commission. At the early stage, the EU Commission uh, basically assessed and articulated the integrated strategy and environmental targets. Now we are leaving a phase in which it uh, explores driving forces for agricultural trends. Uh, imagine sector-specific codes of conduct best practices and eco schemes especially for the mm, the common agriculture policy uh, in the future i imagine that the european uh, commission will focus on specific measures such as transmit, transmitting environmental information balancing business opportunities and environmental benefits and uh, um, especially uh, it would be great uh, if uh, the eu commission would create green uh, circuit circuits at all level of governance so uh, that's uh, all. And thank you very much for listening and looking forward for, um, for questions. Perfect. Um, thank you, Sabrina. Uh, that was a very comprehensive presentation. Uh, I hope that if there are any questions or maybe some interest in some of the references that you put there at the end, um, we can uh, share the slides after this uh, conversation for uh, whoever may be interested. Um, in the meantime, uh, we have space for questions. We have around 10 minutes left. Um, I don't know if Ricardo wants to start with a question, uh, and then we can, in the meantime, also open to the audience. You can type your questions to the right, and, and I can also jump in um, with my own questions. So, Ricardo. Yes, I will, uh, I will react to Sabrina's presentation very, very briefly, because uh, if there are questions from the audience, I would like to give priority to those questions. And also, I would like to hear your reaction, Dario, to this presentation. Um, so very, very <clears throat> rapidly, I would like to ask Sabrina, what is your uh, uh, overall uh, impression about uh, 
the lawmaking process in the EU in this sector, because you are uh, uh, dealing with a lot of uh, instruments here. You are dealing with you know, uh, starting from the treaties, the principle of integration, then we have uh, a plethora of secondary legislation here in the EU, which is increasing uh, on a daily basis. And then we have lots of policy documents, uh, like, for example, the EU uh, communicate, the Commission's communications, and also these voluntary tools for uh, businesses, uh, like, for example, cons codes of conduct. So what is, what is your uh, impression about this mixture of instruments, of legislative instruments in this area? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, I think that uh, um, this, is a, this is a very complex system um, and a very complex way to deal with uh, the um, agri-food, the, the green uh, uh, transition for agri-food system. And uh, actually, the, the answer will be the integration of all these sectoral policy. I mean, the common agriculture policy and the common on fishery policy together with the EU policy for the consumers and uh, uh, trying to put together all these pieces of uh, policy it is possible to have a complex uh, and in the sense uh, complete uh, um, picture of the, 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 the future of the, um, uh, the Green Deal and the farm to fork strategy. Actually I, I think that uh, it is uh, important to the to consider together this policy but it also too difficult to understand uh, the the linkages between uh, the, 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 the the targets of this uh, sectoral policy so uh, my impression is that the, the picture and the um, framework is complex the it is not possible to have a uh, one single strategy for all this policy the lecture the, the lecture of this uh, process should be uh, through the integration of environmental policy of course in this policy inside all uh, these uh, um, all uh, every um, every policy of course yeah thank you so much Perfect. Yes. Yes, I'm uh, here looking at the chat. I don't see uh, any additional question yet. I really encourage you to ask your questions uh, to those who uh, might be uh, watching. Uh, maybe I just wanted to then build upon um, this with with a question on my own. Um, I think um, I, I wanted to focus on the the code of conduct that that you mentioned. Um, I think it's quite uh, it's quite interesting that in uh, the preparation of, of the conduct, the Commission was also quite clear that you will uh, evaluate whether the Code of Conduct is successful in achieving its objectives, in, um, and, and, in, and if not, it might then you know, reevaluate and, and uh, decide on other approaches. And uh, I'm wondering what you what you sort of make of the possibilities of um, of codes and co codes of conduct in general in achieving their objectives in this specific context. Um, I, I think it's I think it's quite interesting. For example, in an international law context, there's been a lot written about. I'm thinking, for example, of the area of fisheries. For example, you know, when the FAO had its code of conduct for uh, for responsible fisheries, there was a lot of conversation about the 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 possible um, the possible effects that it could have that it could go you know, beyond the existing legal framework at the time, precisely because it was focusing not only on governments, but also on everybody in the fisheries sector. And it's, you know, it's a bit of the same issue here. So how do we involve and how do we foster change at the level of the actual economic operators? And moving from the international context to the, to the European law context, do you see this instrument as particularly effective for European uh, associations and companies, and, and why would it be preferable? 
Well, the Commission, uh, when launched the um, EU Code of Conduct for Responsible Business and uh, Food Business and uh, Marketing Practices, um, uh, said that the company should uh, look at the international guidelines and the FEU uh, guidelines for responsible uh, responsibility in the agri-food system. Actually, I think that that are, um, are real uh, embodiment of this code of conduct should be um, solely voluntarily and uh, um, it is uh, it is important to to build a um, a, a, a real uh, consci consciousness in the um, uh, in the companies to uh, a green corporate so social responsibility just to give an example uh, the the actual state of the art of code of conduct of company uh, does not uh, consider um, properly the environmental aspects. They simply um, frame the aspects that are in, interlinked with the safety of workers or the use of dangerous substances, and they um, use the so-called precautionary and uh, principle in their code of conduct. The code of conduct for a green responsibility uh, needs some something more, need a, a, a true and a realistic uh, commitment to uh, sustainable practices, uh, to take into account uh, indicators that, um, uh, that uh, took into account environmental impact of the all um, value value chain for the food production. So uh, I think that uh, act, uh, in, in this moment currently, there is not a proper uh, embodiment of the international aspiration uh, in the internal policies and strategies of companies. Thank you, thank you for the for the clarification. I think it was, you know, I just find it interesting to 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 um, to consider whether this would be, you know, the the the, the approach that is considered the, the one that has the strongest possibility of, of you know being successful in really influencing this paradigm paradigm shift at the, at the level of companies, and um, and I mean, hopefully it will. I, it will be interesting. Actually, I, I would say that, uh, mm, of course, the, com the commission commitment uh, toward the corporate social responsibility using code of conduct, it's a, mm, it's a point. Uh, it's a, a first stage toward uh, a, a green uh, responsibility. But uh, it is also to consider the instrument uh, we are going to, to use uh, in, the, um, uh, in the food production and distribution. And this is for this reason that I, I, I really think that environmental um, product declarations could be a useful tool because they have the uh, ability to catch and to grasp the, um, the attention on the realistic impact of agriculture uh, on uh, the environment, the impact of the uh, production and distribution and processing of products um, uh, in biodiversity by using indicators such as climate change, acidification, or eutrophication. So um, I, I really think that uh, in the future would be a, a, a very so, um, a very important and deep dialogue about the use of this instrument. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, Ricardo, did you uh, have maybe any additional points? Otherwise, we are approaching the one hour mark. So we, uh, we may, of course, also defer any additional questions from the audience to um, email follow ups or you know, any other uh, contact that they want to make with us or with Sabrina. Uh, I would like just to, you know, to conclude our um, lecture today by asking something more uh, to uh, Sabrina. Uh, I would like, I would, I would be very, very curious uh, in understanding Sabrina's views about uh, human rights approach to sustainable agriculture. Because, of course, uh, I think that everybody now agrees and everybody is uh, uh, has fully understood that nowadays agricultural policy in the EU 
cannot, it's not just a market, it's not just a question of markets. It was originally just a question of internal market. Nowadays, uh, the common agricultural policy must be pursued with uh, environmental objectives in mind, according to the principle of integration. Uh, how do you see the relevance of a human rights approach here in the EU? Do you see any areas where this human rights approach can be useful, relevant? Because, I, I, for example, you mentioned Article 37 of the EU Charter uh, of Environmental Rights, which, of course, may be relevant here. I just wonder whether you may you have any views on this. How relevant is a human rights approach to sustainable uh, food systems? Well, I think that you, the, the human rights perspectives and the, the green turn are uh, interlinked. I mean that uh, I am a supporter of a one earth approach. I mean that uh, it is impossible to imagine a sustainable growth uh, and uh, a sustainable development without ensuring human rights and a, a, um, a, a really uh, interlinked uh, idea of uh, life, uh, environment, and also uh, richer. Uh, and, and all the, the rights uh, concerning the relationship between human, humans and uh, uh, environment. Of course, Article 37 of the, um, the Charter is a, a tool. It actually, uh, it has a very um, long process to be, to be written and its value, uh, judicial legal value, uh, is not clear because uh, it, it is questionable whether it is a principle of a right it is this is a very very complex discourse but um, it is important that the eu charter embodies uh, this approach of uh, um, sustainable development considering the dimension of human and uh, the environment i am really interested in another aspect uh, um, of the green uh, the, the relationship between greening and human rights which is to say the biocultural rights uh, has now um, is considered in the eu declaration of peasants and other people working in rural areas there is a human rights perspective in the, in, in that instrument and a very um, interesting way to see how the use of the sustainable use of resources, the right to land, the right to empower women uh, and the, the relation with, between uh, environment and society and human rights are interlinked, which is something that it is important in imaging a, a, a green, a greening of also human rights. I mean, Thank you so much, Sabrina. That is exactly what I had in mind. I mean, the rights of uh, the weakest parties, like women, like peasants, like farmers, small farmers, as opposed to the, you know, uh, the, the power of corporations, uh, uh, which is, of course, at stake in this area. So thank you so much for your reply. Thank Indeed, you. thank you so much, Sabrina. I would close it here since we passed uh, the past the one hour mark, and uh, I would really like to thank you for uh, participating and uh, and being our guest. Um, I thank Ricardo as usual for hosting uh, this uh, conversation, and I invite all of you to join us for the next installments of the of our guest lectures series of our webinars. Um, and uh, of which we will keep you updated in, uh, in due course as the academic year starts. Ricardo, if you have something uh, final that you want to say, or if Sabrina wants to say something uh, before we close, the floor is uh, yours. No, I would give the, the floor to Sabrina for the last word. I already uh, said that we are very thankful to her for uh, her time and dedication to this uh, lecture. So I would just like to remind to the audience that uh, there will be a YouTube video available, so you may, uh, you know, uh, uh, you may pass on the information to your to your colleagues or to your uh, friends uh, if they want to have uh, to watch the video. It's it will be available there permanently. And also, uh, uh, we are very grateful to Sabrina for handing us the slides because we are pretty sure that people yeah. will ask uh, for the slides. So with their permission, we will post the slides sure. in our uh, website.
Thank you, Sabrina. The floor is yours. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here and having the opportunity to present this particular topic of my research. Uh, it is a, a pleasure actually to, to follow your activity and all your um, series. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting you, all of you in person. And I hope we will have a further uh, occasions for collaboration and talking about this uh, important and relevant a green issue uh, in the future. Thank you so much, Sabrina, and uh, thank you so much to everybody who uh, watched again. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.